recorded at Full Presbyterian Church, Portland, Oregon, in 1952. The following is the morning worship sermon. Reverend John H. Van Arp will introduce Reverend J.B.H. Van Arp, Sr. Ten years later, I married us in Mackenzie, Tennessee, my wife's home church, the Methodist Church in Mackenzie. And then again later, I had the privilege to baptize both our children as they were born in St. Louis, Missouri. It is but natural that I feel highly honored to be able to introduce to you my father, Reverend J.B. Eighth and Lear Sr., who at this time will bring the morning message to you. I thank God for the opportunity to be with you. It's a great joy to Mrs. Van Leer and Joanna, our daughter and myself, to look into your faces and to, to be with you, of whom my son John wrote so often. Now, I would like to speak to you on the basis of the Word of God from the 11th chapter of Hebrews, the 6th verse. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the 6th verse. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith is a most important factor of the Christian life. It is illustrated to us uh, by the writer, when he said before us, Abel, leading us right to the beginning of human history, to the first home. Abel pleased God when he offered by faith that sacrifice that was accepted to him. He was a shepherd, and he took one of those sweet little lambs from his flock and sacrificed that dear little lamb as an approach to God, being a type of the lamb of God that carries away the sin of the world. How greatly rewarded was Abel, for that approach to God by faith, when he obtained the testimony that he was righteous in the sight of God, that righteousness which we receive by faith, and that Abel, while he is yet dead, while he is dead, yet speaketh to us. And then the second example we see in Enoch, the seventh from Adam. And he walked by faith. And his walk was pleasing to God. That means his life was so pleasing to God that life that he lived by faith in God that the father said to him one day when Abel when Enoch was walking with him. Now, let us walk home together to glory. So Enoch pleased God to such an extent that God took him home without that he had to die and to be put in the coffin. His going to glory is a type 
of the rapture, which will take place when our Lord Jesus will come back, when he will return to take his church unto himself and that those who are alive at that time will not die, will be transformed and receive the resurrection body and will meet the Lord in the air to be forever with him. It's a reward for Enoch to have at that time already a part in this wonderful experience to go to glory without having that. And then the third example of that faith which is pleasing to God and which is so richly rewarded, we see in Noah who prepared the ark for the salvation of his house. And that ark which he prepared was a type of Jesus Christ, the true ark of salvation. And Noah, by faith, prepared that ark for the salvation of his family. And we can do it by taking our family to church, by instructing them at home, by having the family altar where the family worships God. Oh, how richly was Noah rewarded for building this ark for the salvation of his family. For God, who is a God of love, but also a God of judgment. He allowed the rest of the world to perish. Now only Noah in his family was saved. Oh, you say, I would like to have that kind of a faith which is so pleasing to God and will be so richly rewarded of him. You can have it. I quoted examples of the old dispensation, but we live in the new dispensation. That we have more light and a fuller revelation of God Though it is in this dispensation, even more possible to have a faith like that, which is pleasing to God. That faith must have a foundation. That is the first requirement. That must have the right kind of a foundation. For some people, faith is something that is just hanging in the air. Or some wishful thinking. Or some impression. It is just some hazy thing. But faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. It is something real. And that's faith must have a foundation. And that foundation uh, we find in our text. For without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. That is the foundation of our faith. And how do we know who God is? We know it from his word. There, his actions are revealed. How do we know? How do we learn to know a person? By just meeting them? By just looking in their faces? Do we learn to know a person by that? 
We learn to know a person by his actions. How they treat us. How they deal with us. We learn to know a person when we do business, business with them. Then we live with them. And so we learn to know God by his actions. And his actions are revealed in the word of God. Therefore, study your Bible if you want to know God. And meditate upon what he has done. And then you will find that God is a God of love. The Ark of Noah was a type of Jesus Christ. And then we study the Bible. We see how God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The love of God is full to the sacrifice he made by giving his only begotten son. And the cross, the manifestation of the love of Jesus Christ who Himself for us. Oh, when we study the actions of God, as they are revealed in the Word of God, we learn to know who He is a God, a God of love and also a God of judgment. But most of all, a God of love. You see, the word of God must be the foundation of our faith. And in the word of God, we learn also how to walk by faith with God in obedience to his will. Having then based our faith Upon what God is. As a God of love. And what he has done as such. We must exercise that faith. For faith. Without works. Is dead. We must apply. That faith. In our own experience, we must make a personal application in our own lives of God's promises. Then we read that Christ died for our sins. We must exercise our faith in this sense that we believe. That it is for me. I believe. That he died for my sins. Not just for the sins of the whole world. But that he died. For my sins. That is. Exercising our faith. Applying it to ourselves. And then we will find out. That this faith. Will be rewarded. By a wonderful experience. The experience of salvation. The experience of the new birth. For when you exercise that faith. You rest. In the wonderful promise. That Christ did a finished work when he died for our sins on the cross. Oh, what a wonderful reward does that faith get? Does that faith get when we put our trust in him? 
in Christ and believe that he died for our sins, that he died for my sins. Now in the exercise of that faith, a struggle comes up. Some belief hinders our faith. It neutralizes our faith. It paralyzes our faith. That's where the struggle comes in when we exercise our faith. That we fight against doubt, against unbelief. Oh, you have no doubt, you have the experience that when you try to exercise faith in the promises of God, that doubt creeps in. And that you say, oh, is that possible? Will he do that for me? Has he done that for me? If I have followed in that great salvation, or that all kinds of of objections come up. That is doubt creeping in, realizing our faith. And that is why we must fight the good fight for faith. As Paul said, I have fought the good fight of faith. At the end of his life, he said, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. That shows he had that struggle, just as we all have. And when faith is paralyzed by doubt, we lose it. We must fight by fighting against self, against unbelief, which comes up in our lives when we try to exercise faith. Now, you have to exercise faith in your fellow men. In business, business cannot be done without faith. But then when you deal with a person and, and you begin to doubt that person's honesty, you cannot any very well do business any longer with him or with her. Oh, did you ever have the experience that somebody doubted your truthfulness? That somebody doubted you have never seen? Have you ever had an experience? And you know how terrible that is. And people doubt your truthfulness, your honesty, your moral intention. Now we would not willfully treat our fellow men like that. How much more should you be on our guard and fight against doubt when it comes to trusting God? Oh, let us cling by faith to the word of God, to his promise. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And then you believe in Christ, believe that also, that you are saved. So many people do not dare to admit that they are saved. They say, I hope so, and say, all kinds of doubt of cancers which express tongues. They do not dare to say, I am a Christian by grace. I am saved. I am born again. And God's word says, many as have accepted Christ, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, it's a born not of the blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of Christ. If you believe that, 
That's if you have accepted Christ. You are born again. And if you, if you are not born again, if you are not saved, it is because you have not believed. You have allowed to let the pain and paralyze your faith. Our faith must have the solid foundation of the eternal word of God. Faith in what God's word promises must be justified. And that means to have faith in God. Not to doubt him. But to, to, to rest in what he has done for us. Through Jesus Christ. And what he will do to us. Now that faith. That is based upon the word of God. And that is exercised. That faith works. You will get the experience of it as it works. That faith will be rewarded. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to him must believe that he is. That he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Oh, the experience of the reward of faith is so wonderful. You can hear it when a Christian testifies and says, I know that I am saved. For I was blind. I could not see anything of the kingdom of God. I could not understand anything of the word of God. I was blind. But by the grace of God, I can see the kingdom of God. Now God works how the Christian church is represented all over the earth. How God is working in human life. I can see the kingdom of God. And when I read the word of God that speaks to me, God speaks to me. You hear the testimony. Formerly, I loved sin. I hated my fellow man. <laughs> But now, now, I love God and my fellow man, and I do. I didn't care for the things of God, but now I seek the, the kingdom of God first and all the different faces of my life. How wonderful it is that God rewards through faith that is based in the word of God and what God is and what he has done for us. But all that doubt, when we give way to it, does so much harm in our lives. And God will test you We may test his promises. We may try out the promises of God, but he will try us too. Oh, be careful not to give way to doubt. To any phase of unbelief. At the beginning of this century, there was a so-called theological professor who went up and down the country of Germany to speak in different cities, trying to prove historically that Jesus Christ had never lived. At the roused the Christian people in the church of Hamburg 
in the in the city of Hamburg. And they called out a mass meeting in one of the biggest places of Hamburg. And they came together there to give testimony to the fact that they had experience in their lives that Jesus Christ was a real savior and that he had saved them and made two creatures of them. Thousands of people came together at that mass meeting and that big place was too small for the crowds. They had to open up the churches in the neighborhood and after they had met, they went through the streets of that city singing the songs of Zion. Oh, may God help us to have our faith based upon the word of God and to exercise that faith daily. Also, when new things come up in our lives, new difficulties, God will Try our faith with all. Exercise that faith and fight against them. Then you will have the experience that God will richly reward that faith. He will help you to do that which is pleasing in his sight. He will give you grace to walk with him. And live a happy Christian life. He will enable you to be a witness for him. And win others for him. You'll be a Christian who is on fire for God. And you will be rewarded. Beyond your own imagination. Oh may God help us. To have that faith. Of our Father. To believe the word of God. With all our hearts. To exercise our faith. Even fighting. With all our hearts against doubt. Looking forward. To the wonderful blessings. Which God bestows upon us. Not only. In this life. In our everyday life. But when everything passes away, there to be with him there in glory and to reign with him. Oh, when Christ comes back for his church, we will be with him and reign with him. Oh, maybe to reign with Christ already in this life over our sinful self and the sin that too easily beset us. May God help us to have that victorious faith that will be so richly rewarded. Amen. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this great promise in thy word. That without faith it is impossible to please God. And he that cometh unto him must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Help us to seek him diligently. To seek him with all our hearts. Oh, if there be anyone that hasn't found him as yet, may that one surrender to him at this moment. If there be Christians who have met with failure in their Christian life, oh, may they take new courage. Have faith in God. And exercise that faith daily to get the victory. 
over all that which makes them fail. We ask it in the name of Jesus. 